Now we're going to look at the language and structure of this poem. Hardy writes in a deceptively simple way, but we must not let this obscure just what a complex and interesting poem it is. Hardy has divided the poem into two sections, and this structure represents two different views of the events. The tragedy is the death of a soldier in South Africa, and the fact his widow in London has to receive the telegram bringing her the news. Everyone in the poem is anonymous, which makes them stand as representatives of others. The dulled senses of stanza one, the tawny vapour, the webby fold on fold, is sharply interrupted by the messenger's knock, which cracks smartly. The smart knock snaps the wife out of her dreaminess. It is the arrival of the authorities, and they bring news which is full of euphemism. He has fallen in the far south land. The parenthesis conveys the emotional impact of the wife. She stumbles in her reading of the telegram, and the ellipsis leaves hanging in the air the shock and pain she feels. The second section explores the ironies of the soldier's death. The next day brings a letter from him, written some time earlier, but delivered more slowly than the telegram. His handwriting contrasts with the formality and sterility of the telegram. It is written in highest feather, an old technology, and is fresh, firm, the dashes reflecting the way she dwells on the words he has sent. But in the final line, Hardy delivers a final irony. There is a sense that this couple have been estranged and that he and she hope for a new love that they would learn. This is the love they need to rekindle after his absence, but it reveals to us that perhaps the love between them had already died. This may reflect Hardy's awareness of the pain of his own broken marriage. The hopes he expresses in the final stanza contrast with the doom of the first, but we know now these hopes are doomed.